I'm Dr. Freda. The COVID-19 infection can have a wide variety of symptoms. It can range from no symptoms at all, to mild or vague symptoms, to severe symptoms or complications leading to hospitalizations. And even after you have gotten over the COVID-19 infection, you can have long-term symptoms or post-viral complications. And this can really make you feel like you're in this thing for the long haul. Well, today I'm going to explain the COVID-19 symptoms and how you can recognize the signs and symptoms of coronavirus. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm a medical doctor who has been triple board certified in nephrology, internal medicine, and pediatrics. And today I'm going to explain the symptoms of COVID-19 and how to recognize the signs and symptoms of the coronavirus. First off, let's discuss the difference between signs and symptoms. Signs are what you see, symptoms are what you feel. And certainly the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 can vary widely. Just to give a little history, COVID-19 was discovered at the end of 2019 when there was a cluster of pneumonia cases in Wuhan, China. These cases were found to be caused by a novel coronavirus. The virus rapidly spread throughout the world and became a COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. The World Health Organization named the disease Coronavirus Disease 2019 or COVID-19 and it was determined that this novel coronavirus was caused by the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. Now, in order to be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of COVID-19, you must first understand its incubation period, or the time between being exposed to the virus to actually developing symptoms. And the incubation period is between one and 14 days, meaning that you may be exposed to coronavirus but not actually develop symptoms until 14 days later. That being said, most patients have an incubation period of between four and five days. So let's talk about some of the symptoms of COVID-19. Symptoms may include fever, cough, shortness of breath. You may have a generalized fatigue or malaise. You can get nausea, vomiting. You can also develop diarrhea. Another symptom is a loss of taste or a loss of the sense of smell. Patients with COVID-19 can even get pink eye or conjunctivitis. If you have COVID-19, you can get a sore throat, you can get myalgias or muscle aches. Some patients can even get skin changes or dermatologic changes. They can get a red, bumpy, small rash or maculopapular rash. They can even get hives or urticaria. Some patients with COVID-19 have reported getting small blisters on their skin or vesicular lesions. If you are having shortness of breath with COVID-19, as many patients do, you may get a chest X-ray with the findings of bilateral infiltrates or signs of congestion of the lungs on both sides. A chest CT or a chest CAT scan may reveal a ground glass appearance or ground glass opacities of the lungs, where the inside of your lungs literally look like ground glass on the CT. If you have severe shortness of breath with a COVID-19 infection, you may even have a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot in the lungs, as the COVID-19 infection has been associated with thromboembolic disease or thick blood, high clotting. For patients with COVID-19 with very severe shortness of breath, they could actually develop respiratory failure or ARDS, meaning that the respiratory system has been affected so badly that they actually require intubation or having a breathing tube put down their throat for mechanical ventilation. If you have a COVID-19 infection, you can also get neurological symptoms. You can get weakness, you can get facial drooping. And in this case, you could have the complication of a stroke. Some patients with COVID-19 may develop delirium or confusion. They might have an increased amount of falls or just an overall decline in health. This can be common among elderly patients, especially patients over the age of 80 or in patients who already have an underlying neurological condition. Kidney disease can also be associated with COVID-19. 
And then there is the aftermath. In many patients who have had COVID-19, tested negative, and who have even developed their own natural antibodies, well, they still have some long-term complications or some post-viral symptoms. Patients have been reported to have continued malaise, fatigue, headaches. They have described having weakness or a pins and needles neurological sensation in their fingers and their toes. You have patients who have described a brain fog or just a confusion or a forgetfulness that sometimes lingers over them even after they have gotten over the COVID-19 infection. So if you have had the COVID-19 infection and you have some of these symptoms and you've gone to your doctor and they verify that you are no longer positive for COVID-19, if you are still having some of these symptoms and complications, you are not alone. Many patients who are living with these post COVID-19 symptoms refer to themselves as the long haulers. And there is still much research to be done on this post viral syndrome and how to properly treat it. Remember, even if you have no symptoms of COVID-19, if you have been exposed, you may be asymptomatic. And asymptomatic patients are a large source of the spreading or the transmission of COVID-19. Also, you must remember that COVID-19, this novel coronavirus, is not the only virus that causes these symptoms. Please be sure to watch my YouTube video on influenza, the flu, explained. If you do have any of these signs or symptoms of COVID-19, or if you suspect that you have been exposed to the virus, please contact your physician. If your symptoms are severe, and certainly if you are having respiratory distress or difficulty breathing, you need to be seen. You need to go to the emergency room or call an ambulance. There is great research being done on how to treat COVID-19 and on vaccinations for COVID-19, but the most basic tools we have on how to prevent the spread of COVID-19 are wearing masks, socially distancing, and exercising good hand hygiene. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the notification button so you'll be among the first to know when I release new medical content. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram, at Dr.Frida. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching. I want you to be safe and be sure to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.